sellout crowd, and that means a raucous crowd at the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana, and why not? A week six clash of two of the NFL's unbeaten, the 5-0 New York Giants taking on the 4-0 New Orleans Saints. Hi again, everybody, alongside Troy Aikman and Pam Oliver. I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome to the NFL on Fox. The Giants for the third time in franchise history, Troy, off to a 5-0 start. Big reason why? A young man who grew up right here in New Orleans, here quarterback Eli Manning. Yeah, and this was the passing game that had everybody concerned coming into the season. I mean, they've been absolutely sensational. Eli Manning playing as well as anybody in the league right now at that position. He's playing with great confidence. And, Tom, he's throwing the ball as accurately as I've ever seen. Now, on the other side of the ball for the New York Giants, they've played exceptionally well defensively. They're going to have their hands full against the Saints offense today. Now some are surprised the Saints have started 4-0. Although you turn back the clock to a conversation you had before training camp ever began with their head coach Sean Payton. He liked his team. Yeah and I think it started when he was able to get Greg Williams as his defensive coordinator. And that side of the ball has been absolutely terrific. Of course offensively they knew they were going to be good. They've got Drew Brees back. He's playing great. The big difference for them has been their ability to run the football. And Sean Payton said it best. He believes whoever runs the ball the best today will be the team that wins. Should be one heck of a game from here in the Big Easy. We're back after this from the Verizon Football Zone. The hottest ticket in quite some time at the Superdome in New Orleans for this matchup of unbeatens between the Giants and the Saints. And now it's time for the Autotrader.com ultimate quarterback comparison. Two of the league's best. Drew Brees, nine touchdown passes. Eli Manning with 10. Autotrader.com, the ultimate automotive marketplace. And for Eli, his first time playing in a city where he grew up in the Superdome. Came here regularly as a youngster with his family. And he's standing by on the field with Pam Oliver. Well, Eli, this is a building you're obviously very familiar with. But what are some of the things, though, you have to avoid, the pitfalls you have to avoid, just because of the circumstances you're in? Well, you know, we're just going out there. we got to play our regular game. We uh, can't let too much emotion get involved or, or think about who, who's here or whatever games you see in here. It's about going out there, performing well, uh, staying in rhythm, and uh, you know, making smart decisions. Your defense is obviously very improved. So what's critical for your unit today? Well, we just can't turn the ball over. They're, uh, they, they cause a lot of turnovers, a lot of interceptions, and they're very aggressive. So we, we got to uh, see the blitz, uh, know when we're picked up, everybody be on the same page, communicate very well today. It, it should be loud. So uh, we just got to avoid the bad plays and, uh, you know, stay uh, consistent, stay in our own, our own rhythm. Thanks for your time. Hey, thanks, Pam. Eli's ready. Drew Brees is ready. Are you ready? We be us. We be special. We smell We Yes, on the top. One, two, three, four, five, six. The Giants and the Saints week six of the NFL season. New Orleans won the toss, has elected to receive. So right from the get-go, we'll get a look at Drew Brees in this high-octane Saints offense. Lawrence Tyne set to kick it away. Courtney Roby set to return it. Matchup of two of the NFL's unbeatens underway. Roby from the 10 across the 25 and is dropped at the 30 yard line. Take a look at the lineups offensively for New Orleans. Drew Brees in his ninth season in the NFL, his sixth as a New Orleans Saints. And what a difference he's made since coming over from San Diego. Plenty of weapons, including the former New York Giant tight end Jeremy Shockey. And what a year Jeremy Shockey is having up to this point, leading the team currently in receptions. Shockey has tried to downplay this matchup against his former team. And on first down, Breeze to throw it. Lays it off for Reggie Bush. And he tiptoes his way out of bounds at the 37 yard line. It brings up second and three for New Orleans. Defensively for the Giants, outstanding again. 
They rank number one in total defense in the NFL. Brees looking for the long one, and Robert Meacham well covered. Step for step along the way, Terrell Thomas. Of course, this Giants defense comes in beat up. They're without starters Michael Bowling, Kenny Phillips, and Aaron Ross. But those who are taking their place have played well. Well, and I think that's uh, something that's been very interesting watching New York this year is they've had a number of guys miss time because of injuries, and yet the players who have stepped in for them have, have played very well. Breeze on third and three. And he will dive out to the 42, and that will move the chains the first down. New York defensively that time does a great job of covering everybody up. And not something that's very easy to do against this talented wide receiver core. I mean, they'll run four deep at wide receiver, and they get a matchup that they like more times than not. But New York doing a good job of covering them up. And, and Drew Brees showing some of the things that he can do with his feet to pick up that first down. First carry of the day. This is Pierre Thomas, who is healthy again and takes over again as a starter in the backfield. Mike Bell started the first two games when Thomas was slowed down by a knee injury, but in the last two games, Thomas has rushed for better than 200 yards. Yeah, I really like Pierre Thomas. I think he's a, he's a fine back, and, and he has the one quality that I think all running backs have and that is great vision you know there's different ways to do it but all the great ones have an ability to anticipate where the hole is going to be and, and he does a great job of that Shockey playing in his 100th game makes the catch and that's good enough for a first down to the New York 45. Well, that's got to feel pretty good for Jeremy Shockey. He's tried to downplay the emotion all week long, but to get involved here on the first series, come down around a hook route and put the ball right on him. And I know in talking with Drew Brees, I said, is this a game that you really want to feed the ball early to Jeremy Shockey, knowing how much this game means to him going against his former team? He said, we want to get the ball to Jeremy Shockey early in every game. Great protection. And incomplete. Again, Breeze had an eye on Shockey. I tell you, this offensive line for New Orleans is, is really an underrated group. I mean, they have done a great job. When you consider what they've been able to do offensively for the last several years, and then this year, both throwing it and running it. You know, New York has now covered them up pretty good in the secondary a couple of times, but there's not been a whole lot of pressure there on Drew Breeze. Thomas picks up a hard three. It'll bring up third down and seven for New Orleans on their opening drive of the game. It should be noted both of these teams have scored on their first possession in each of their games. For New Orleans, that's four opening drives, three touchdowns, and a field goal. Sean Payton in his fourth year as head coach, 45 years young, out of Naperville, Illinois. And of course, for three years, he was on the Giants staff. Wrapping up with Jim Fossil. And Tom Conklin in his sixth season, he's taken to the Giants four straight years to the playoff. Juggling catch made by Lance Moore in traffic. And he's down to the 25-yard line, another first down. Pretty tight fit right there, trying to get this ball into Lance Moore, and there's hands that get on it. Corey Webster had a chance, and, and the ball comes up, and just great concentration there by Lance Moore. A big hit at the end by C.C. Brown. But you see the coverage there, great coverage by Corey Webster. He had a chance to make an interception on that one, and the ball was on top of him before he was ready for it, and as a result, Moore gets the deflection. First down at the New York 25. Thomas met at the line of scrimmage by Human Yora and a host of others. Well, I think coming into this game, Tom, we all looked at it and said, wow, the Giants, as far as who they have faced in the last three weeks, not real explosive offensive teams. In fact, downright bad 
offensive teams. And how are they going to hold up against this New Orleans offense? And here we are in this first possession. And I tell you, the Saints are, are doing a good job because I think this Giants team is a good unit on that side of the ball. Tenth play of the drive, second and seven. More again. Inside the 20, let's check in with Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles for a game break. Well, you've got two of the unbeatens in the NFC. The other one, the Minnesota Vikings, trying to stay that way. Opening drive, Asante Shanko from Brett Favre, 19 yards on the score. And they're up quickly on top of Baltimore. Tom and Troy. Thank you, Kurt. What a start again today for Brett Favre. What a start to this season. His first is a Viking. Third down at two. Pump fake. More underneath to the ten. Another first down. Moore led the Saints in receptions a season ago with 79. There's so much of what the Giants want to do defensively is they want to get pressure with a four man rush and they're as good at doing it as anyone in the league and yet they haven't been able to get near Drew Brees here on this first possession. They brought linebacker blitz a couple plays ago but the Saints offensively picked it up as well. And Drew Brees I mean he does a great job finding receivers even under duress. You give them some time to find these guys and it's going to make for a long day. Thomas for maybe two. Pierre Thomas took on a more featured role in the backfield last season after Duke McAllister was injured. He led the Saints with 625 rushing yards and nine touchdowns. Also very good out of the backfield in terms of catching the football. I think all these backs whether it's Pierre Thomas or Mike Bell and even the fullback Heath Evans I mean, you've got to be pretty versatile if you're going to play in this offense for Sean Payton and you're right Tom they all do a nice job of catching the ball. Well play of the drive Thomas. Spins his way inside the five down to the four. It'll bring up third down and less than two. Got a good block right there by a center Jonathan Goodwin. Not a Pro Bowl appearance from the group on the field today along the offensive line. The Saints are without their two time Pro Bowl left tackle Jamal Brown. You know so many times when it comes to voting for Pro Bowl offensive linemen teams that run the ball well are the teams that send somebody to Hawaii. And if the Saints continue to do what they've been able to do I would expect at least one to be making that trip this year. Third and three. Very close to a first down is Thomas. He got a big time block from his fullback Keith Evans. I think you've got to be pretty impressed with the, the play calling of Sean Payton here on this possession. Mixing in the run in the pass, doing a good job. Staying out of some long down situations. Back to back running plays there with success. Decision time perhaps depending on the measurement here. They're going to bring out the chains. The spot from here looks like it might be about a half yard short of a first down. They are short by less than that. Decision time now for Sean Payton. Well, the way he's studying that play sheet, they're going for it. I tell you what Tom last week or two weeks ago they had the bye last week against the Jets they went for it on fourth down fourth and one and failed to make it they also failed to make it twice down here against the Jets on on third and fourth down. So from that standpoint when you look at some of the, the success that they have not had in short yard situ situations th this year you'd say all right we'll kick the field goal but Sean feels that they can pick it up. Mike Bell out of the I formation will get the ball and leaps into the end zone touchdown. This is 
Straight handoff to Mike Bell over the top. So much for the Giants taking the crowd noise out of it. <laughs> John Carney went to the Pro Bowl as a New York Giant a season ago. On to tack on the point after. A 15 play opening drive for the Saints. 7 nothing. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Go to Southwest.com. Grab your bag. It's on. Very impressive opening drive for Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints. Told you they scored on every opening possession in every game this season. The same holds true for the Giants. Dominic Hickson healthy again. And returns kicks for the first time. And is out to the 23. Eli Manning playing in his hometown in the Superdome for the first time. Leads the Giants offense when we return. Today's game is sponsored by Bud Light. With the just right taste that's not too heavy, not too light, the difference is drinkability. First down, first possession for Eli Manning and the New York Giants trailing 7-0 midway through this opening quarter. Steve Smith, the NFL's leading receiver, with a reception out to the 28-yard line. Not only a homecoming for Eli Manning here today, but also for Brandon Jacobs. He played at Napoleonville Assumption High School. Talked about Smith, the NFL's leading receiver, and one of the outstanding offensive lines in the NFL. hit as he throws but it's caught by Mario Manningham for a first down to the 34. Roman Harper delivered the blow to Eli Manning. Well you can expect to see a lot of this from Greg Williams the defensive coordinator Roman Harper off the edge forces Eli Manning to get the ball out. Does a good job on the execution to be able to pick that up. And Greg Williams the defensive coordinator a few weeks ago when they played the Buffalo Bills brought one or more defensive backs in that game 26 times. Here we are two plays in and he's already shown it once. Play action. Manning guns it over the middle in and out of the hands of the tight end Kevin Boss. Covered step for step by Scott Fujita. What a turnaround defensively for New Orleans. A big reason why good health again. Their two defensive ends, Charles Grant and Will Smith. They got good health, and then of course they brought in Darren Sharper, who has been outstanding. You know, they're at the safety position already with five interceptions. Two of those returned for touchdowns. Brandon Jacobs. Out across the 40 to the 41. Much has been made of Brandon Jacobs' start to this season after back to back 1,000 yard rushing campaigns. He's averaged just three and a half yards per carry. That's down a yard and a half from each of the last two years. Yeah, and I think it's fair to, to question, you know, the production because he had been averaging five yards a carry the previous two years. But I think it has more to do with the fact that he just has not had the big runs that we've seen from him in previous years. Third and three. Manning looking down the field and defended beautifully by Jabari Greer, perhaps the fastest man on the field. Well, good coverage there. Jabari Greer is locked up one on one. He gets turned around, but his makeup speed was phenomenal. If that ball had been able to be laid out a little bit more, then I think you've got a chance to make that play. Dominic Hickson does, but great makeup play there by Jabari Greer. Greer, two times during his collegiate career at Tennessee, 
won the Southeastern Conference Championship in a 60-meter hurdle. He can fly. Reggie Bush will let it bounce, and it's into the end zone. So Breeze and the Saints trying to tack on in a 7-0 lead. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Hyundai Assurance. A little certainty in uncertain times. By DirecTV. No one else has all your favorite channels in HD. And by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. First time all year a defense has stopped the Giants from getting on the scoreboard in their opening possession. And what an opening drive for Drew Brees and the Saints. Breeze to throw it on first down. Wide open Lance Moore. And Moore already his fourth catch of the day. You know, Tom, one of the things that the Saints like to do is they like to bring in backup offensive tackle Zach Streep. They'll put him at the tight end position here. It just solidifies their pass protection or run game. They're either going to run the ball when he's in the game at that spot or they're going to go off play action. That time they go play action. Giants expecting the run. They get the backers up and a nice completion there to Lance Moore. And then what a throw. Drew Brees talked about that. His receivers talked about that when we met Friday. That on passes like that, he'll throw it behind the receiver. He did so here. Shows you the respect the Giants have. They got Terrell Thomas, a corner, going out and covering Jeremy Shockey. And you're right. Just because somebody's on him and in good coverage, that doesn't keep Drew Brees from throwing the football. We saw it on Friday throughout practice. We see it each and every week in these games. He does as good a job as anybody in the league at making a defense cover the entire field. Shockey playing in his 100th regular season game today and a catch in every one of them. Again throwing and again a reception this time by Marcus Colston and he's to the 35. My oh my what a start for the Saints so far. Now you talk about some of the things that Drew Brees does in practice. You know he practices those types of throws like we saw two plays ago there to Jeremy Shockey and so these receivers expect it regardless if if a defender is running with them they expect a back shoulder throw they expect a low outside throw shading away from the defender and when you've got receivers that are expecting the ball because he distributes it so well you, know, you have the kind of passing game that the Saints have had. Devery Henderson steps out of bounds at the Giants 29. See Drew a lot of what you have to do at quarterback is you have to be able to establish protection and so you're trying to identify who the Mike linebacker is a defense knows that they move that guy around. And once you identify who the Mike linebacker is, then everyone else along that offensive line knows exactly who they're going to block. You saw him right there, point out there to the middle linebacker, and that's how protection gets established. Colston inside the five. Touchdown! right on the button. And Marcus Colson he's going to go down the seam and here's another one of those throws. I mean you've got decent coverage there. Antonio Pierce trying to run with him. But Drew Brees has such confidence in his ability to put the ball where he wants to. It's a high throw on the back shoulder. Only his guy can make the play. Behind the linebacker Pierce and in front of the safety. And you saw as Colston came down, it didn't appear as though any part of his body touched the ground. He landed on a defender, but was still able to roll in for the touchdown. And I think that Tom Coughlin is going to challenge 
that decision. We'll take a closer look here and see if he was able to get into the end zone. He's on a body there. From that angle, Tom, it does not look like he was on the ground. He's on top of C.C. Brent. Well, his elbow's down, and that one will come back. Tom Coughlin challenging the ruling on the field as to the spot of the ball. The ball came down on a player. However, his right elbow hit the the uh, in the field of play on the one yard line and the ball was at the one yard line at the time. Therefore the ball will be placed at the one yard line first and goal. There are no charge timeouts. And hockey Lee, our referee. That's yeah, a great shot right here as you're going to see he is on top of CC Brown but the right elbow clearly on the ground a good call and a good challenge there by Tom Coughlin. Tom Sifferman our replay official today. Drew Brees on this drive is five for five, 79 yards, and a yard away from a two touchdown lead in the opening quarter. Who, who is that with 24? Bell checks back into the backfield out of the eye formation behind Heath Evans. Play fake to him, looking for Shockey. Touchdown. First touchdown pass for Breeze in his last 85 attempts. Well, first and goal is the best time to run play action. It's hard on these linebackers. You got Clark trying to stay up with Shockey. And once he comes inside and you give him that much field to run away, it's next to impossible to defense. And right now, this Saints offense looks impossible to defend. 14 points in the opening quarter and the former Giant with a touchdown. Drew Brees has hit on 11 of his first 13. He threw nine touchdown passes the first two weeks of the season, six in the opener against Detroit. The last two games, the Saints have won without having to pile up big points and big numbers offensively because of this outstanding defense. And a 14 0 lead in the opening quarter here today. Hickson from the five. And a big return for Hickson. He has wrestled down close to midfield by. The kicker, Thomas Morstead. Well, here's Hicks, and you see the wedge out in front of him, and, and he just takes it right up the middle. Just great blocking there by the guys in front. I'll tell you what, that's a heck of a tackle by Morstead being able to bring Hicks into the ground because if he's able to get by Morstead here, there is nobody left. I mean, he is gone. Jacobs back to the line of scrimmage. You, know, you look at this game coming in, Tom, and, and, and I felt that looking at the Saints offensively against this Giants defense, that you know the matchups that they create and the problems that the Saints can can present could be problematic for the Giants. So far, it has been through the first couple of series. You know, now this is just the Giants' second offensive possession. But this looks like if the Giants are going to hang in here, they're going to have to be scoring some points right alongside with New Orleans. Because right now, we've not seen anything to suggest the Giants are going to slow them down. Jacobs inside the 40, down to the 36 yard line, and that'll be a first down. Jacobs running the ball well early in this opening quarter. And to go back kind of to what we were talking about last time, you know, Brandon Jacobs, how productive is he, has he been? 
You know, I don't know that he's really running any differently. Last year, he averaged about one 20 yard run for every game he played. This year, through five games, he's only had one. And that, as much as anything, is why his yard per carry average is down. His typical runs are pretty consistent with what we've seen before. Eli down the middle of the field and batted away by Tracy Porter. A second round pick out of Indiana a season ago played in just five games and then got hurt. This is a defensive secondary that has great speed. Tracy Porter as you can tell running side by side there with Mario Manningham and Manningham being one of the big play guys for this Giants offensive attack. Second and ten. Jacobs finds a hole and bangs his way down to the 31 yard line. Jacobs four carries. And depending on the spot here that's now 26 rushing yards for Brandon Jacobs. Still not seen a mod Bradshaw is off to a great start this season for the Giants. Third and five. Wide open and off the fingertips of Steve Smith. Perhaps slightly overthrown by Eli Manning. Boy, they missed an opportunity for a touchdown there. Eli Manning knows it. Looky here, there's no safety in the middle of the field. Everybody's matched up one on one, and they have the perfect route on with Smith going right down the middle of the field. Sharper can't get underneath him, and you got outside technique there by Randall Gay and a better throw, and that's an. That's about as easy as they come in this league. Tynes has missed three times this season, but was three for three last week against Oakland. A timeout on the field. A missed touchdown. And Eli knew it was there. Here's Darren Sharper on that last play. And he's up around the line of scrimmage and at the snap now he's trying to get underneath Steve Smith and what he was anticipating was that the Giants were just going to try to pick up the first down at the chains. And if that were the case that would have been a good coverage call. But the Giants had the perfect pass on in running Smith through the seam and just failed to execute the play. Times from 49 yards away as long as so far this season is 45. And it is good. So after New Orleans jumps out to a 14 nothing lead the Giants able to quiet things down at least temporarily getting on the board to make it 14 to three and now the question is if you're standing on that giant sideline on defense trying to figure out a way to slow down Drew Brees and the Saints offensively. Well that's going to be the real key right now. I mean there's no question because what we've seen of the Saints on their first two possessions offensively. I mean you don't see the Giants doing anything to slow them down. I, I would expect to see a lot more pressure in this possession you know from the Giants defensively missed opportunity there for the New York offense to be able to cut it to a seven point game having to settle for three. This does not look like it's going to be a game where three points are going to help you too much. Of course is a very experienced Giants team. They played in so many big games the last number of years winning the Super Bowl two years ago and most of those pieces are still in place so they they won't be rattled. So the big return by Hickson leads to a field goal for the Giants. And now the question is, can Justin Tuck and company find a way to slow down, not slow down, halt this New Orleans offense? Courtney Roby from the one. And he's tackled at the 27 yard line.
So that will be the end of the opening quarter, although there is a flag on the field, so we'll hold on a minute. On what appear to be the final play of this opening quarter at the Superdome. This might be a horse collar call against Travis Beckham. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness by the kicking team. It was a horse collar. And 15 yard penalty is enforced from the end of the run. First down. And that's the end of the first quarter. 14 3 at the end of the opening quarter in New Orleans. The NFL on Fox continues after a word from your local Fox station. 21 plays in the opening quarter for the Saints offensively. A couple of touchdowns, and they've had the football for 10 and a half minutes. Pierre Thomas, a gain of nine on first down, crossing into New York territory to the 48. Well, if you look at this New York Giants defense and, and what they had done coming into this ball game, Tom, they were holding opponents to passing for only 104 yards and in the first quarter I mean Drew Brees surpassed that and then you question you know what the caliber of the teams are they've been facing and you know there's Bill Sheridan the defensive coordinator and they've not been able to get any pressure on Drew Brees with a four man rush I would expect to see a little bit more from the linebackers and secondary players. Human Yora making a stop on Thomas very close to another first down. And here's what they've done to O.C. Manure on the outside. And there you've got Jamon Bushrod, the left tackle. And you know, he's been a good find for this New Orleans team. They're without Jamal Brown, a two-time Pro Bowl player. He's on IR, and so they've had to put Bushrod in there. And he didn't play two weeks ago because of injury, but he has done a good job here in the early going against O.C. Manure. You know, you talk about the Giants. And the level of competition they have played, especially the last three games, not a finger laid on Breeze yet in his 13 pass attempts. But the last three games, the teams have combined for a 1 in 14 record. And things change in a hurry today as far as the schedule goes. Another catch made by Jeremy Shockey. That is his fourth of the game and another first down. We'll see here you see the pocket that Drew Brees has to step into they bring Pierce this time they do bring the linebacker trying to get pressure on him but a perfectly thrown pass out on the sideline there to Jeremy Shockey. Shockey went to the Pro Bowl four times as a New York Giant spending six years there after they drafted him number one in 2002 out of Miami. Play action. Breeze looking for six more. He's got it. Flagged out on the field. Touchdown catch made by Robert Meacham, but again, a flag is down. Well, there was a collision on the other side Illegal of the field. Contact. Defense number 20. The penalty is declined. Touchdown. Well, here's Robert Meacham, and this is what he does. I mean, he's a speed guy. They want to get him vertical down the field, straight up the seam, and he just goes up and makes a play. I mean, C.C. Brown, who is a better run defender than he is cover safety, just loses the ball, just fails to make a play on the ball with it in the air. Going after his block. Looked like Bruce Johnson got a paw on that point after. But a home run ball. Breeze to Meacham. 20 nothing Saints. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Cadillac. By Frost Blue Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. And you'll find the car you want at the price you want at autotrader.com, the ultimate automotive marketplace. Well, the only thing that has gone right on defense so far today for the Giants 
the point after a moment ago which was blocked <laughs> by Fred Robbins. They have made it look easy haven't they. Got the big return then the penalty on the horse collar tackle and Breeze with a short field finds Meacham for the touchdown. Hitchin. Healthy again and returning kicks and he's out to the 27 yard line. Here's another look at that touchdown with Robert Meacham going up the the hash and, and as I said CC Brown is in a great position to make a play on this ball. They had coverage called Bill Sheridan expecting pass and yet they just weren't able to make a play with the ball in the air. Well, you look at this giant secondary and they're short handed. I mean when you're playing Oakland and Tampa Bay and Kansas City you can hold up against those teams but when you're playing against one of the elite passing teams in the NFL and you're without an Aaron Ross and a Kenny Phillips against this group you're going to get exposed. First down reception made by Mario Manningham and that's a first down out to the 38 yard line. Let's check in with Pam Oliver. Well Tom Saints strong side linebacker Scott Fujita was MIA for much of the first quarter. He didn't even bother to grab his helmet on the Saints last defensive series. The Saints report Fujita has a lower leg injury and his return is questionable. Back to you. And thank you. Fujita was the first defensive addition when Sean Payton took over as head coach and he had better than 100 tackles in three years since coming to New Orleans. They never anticipated that he would be the player that he had become for New Orleans. First carry today for Ahmad Bradshaw. No gain. Of course the last two days on Fox we've had the American League Championship Series travel day today. The Yankees winning a thriller in extra innings last night in the Bronx. The Sheen shifts to Anaheim. Game three tomorrow and again an afternoon start. Four Eastern one Pacific that will be Andy Pettit against Jared Weaver. Blitz coming and Manning had to let it go early. Well I like what the Saints are doing defensively. They showed pressure to Eli Manning's right side and as you saw Eli was trying to get them directed this way. He wants the offensive line to work in that direction and then they came off the back side. They rotated the blitz and came off the back side once Eli had directed protection the other way. Third and ten. Catch depending on the spot. We'll see if it's a first down. Reception made by Hicks and he needed to get to the 49. And the nose of the ball appears to be right on it. First down. That's a big first down for the Giants. What well, sure is. I mean they needed to be able to maintain possession and keep this drive going based on what New Orleans has been able to do on the offensive side of the ball themselves. And Tom Coughlin was over on the sideline and Tom I think even if even if they had not have picked up the first down right there it looked like Coughlin was going to go for it on fourth down anyway. Sean Payton with a question to Ed Hockley I'm sure about the spot of that ball. New Orleans is challenging the ruling on the field that it was a first down. So Ed Hockley will take a look at it and we will step aside. When the receiver catches the ball in the air and is then driven back the point of forward progress is when the ball first comes into his hands and he catches the ball that was beyond the first down line. Therefore the ruling on the field stands. It is a first down. New Orleans is charged with their first time out. Well here's a better look at it. You've got Dominic Hickson. He's well past the first down line there. 
And when the ball is caught, you know, there's really no angle to, to be able to tell with any real certainty as to where he was when he made the catch. So they kept it as it was. And Eli was frustrated in that he wanted to get the ball snapped. And that play was coming in a lot later than what he had wanted. 10 33 to play until halftime. The Giants coming to town at 5 0. Saints 4 0 coming off a bye week last week. And out to a 20 to 3 lead. Ahmad Bradshaw picks up close to 13 on first down, and he's inside the 40 down to the 38 yard line. Got a good block from Steve Smith. You know, this is the kind of things we've been seeing all year so far from Ahmad Bradshaw. He's got great power, but he's got great quickness. You see the move right there that he's able to put on Darren Sharper. I mean, he, is a, he is a hard guy to get on the ground. You see the little shake and bake, and there goes Sharper. He's been, a, he's been an exciting player through these five games. Bradshaw on a little more than half the number of carries given to Brandon Jacobs. Leads the Giants in rushing yards. He'll get it again. Lunges inside the 35, close to the 33. Well, I don't think there's any denying that he's been awfully effective when he's been in these games. But I also think it's fair to say that, you know, the, the pounding and the banging on a defensive front by Brandon Jacobs, I, I do think that that has something to do with the success that Ahmad Bradshaw has had as well. I know that as long as the Giants continue to run the ball like they have through the early part of this year, there's not going to be any lineup changes anytime soon. Intercepted. Darren Sharper with flags all over the field. He's going to go ahead and take it to the end zone just in case. I think the flags came down and the play was blown dead before it ever started. Darren Sharper has returned two interceptions for touchdowns. Personal foul. Roughing the quarterback. Defense number 51. Hit the quarterback high. 15 yard penalty. First down. That's a huge call. Yeah, it's Jonathan Vilma that came in, and, and that's a good call. It's a good call. You're going to see Vilma come in. He lowers his helmet. It's helmet to helmet. I mean, that's that's textbook roughing the passer there. I tell you, oh, Darren Sharper, he was sitting on that oh. route, and he saw it release from Eli's hands and knew immediately where he was going with the break. And, you know, he is the guy that Eli and Tom Coughlin and everybody in on that side of the ball so we got to know where Darren Sharper is at all times he, he has been our nemesis I mean he has made a lot of plays against us so the penalty puts the ball at the New Orleans 19 yard line first down for the Giants Jacobs plows his way inside the 15 down to the 11 Jacobs running hard running effectively early on here today Five carries, 34 yards for Brandon Jacobs. Yeah, you see him here. He, Brandon Jacobs looks like he's a little banged up. He'll be laid on the ground there for a while after that run, and now he's coming off, and they're going to they're going to look at him. You got a trainer following him over to the bench, but something didn't seem right. So Bradshaw back in, and he'll get it. Hey, hey, hey. Close to the 10-yard line. About a. Yard short of the first down. Here's that previous run by Brandon Jacobs, and you know, he gets a helmet down low. It looked like it might have been around his arm or forearm, but he, you see him there just he and he laid there for a few seconds, which is not typical of him. And, and now they got the medical staff over there evaluating him. Third down and a yard. Giants need a touchdown on this drive. First down and a touchdown on this drive. Ahmad Bradshaw, his third rushing touchdown this season, and that's a big one for the Giants. You can see the action here in the backfield, and 
and just how sneaky Omad Bradshaw is. They're going to pull these guys here, and then there's not much room there. And Bradshaw is able to get into that block and then out to the corner. And he's a hard guy to see for these defensive linemen and linebackers because he's so low to the ground. Point after is good by Lawrence Tides. So an interception that never happened. The big penalty on the hit by Vilma keeping the Giants drive alive and Bradshaw cashes in. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by the GMC Sierra, the official vehicle of the NFL. The Giants medical staff still taking a look at Brandon Jacobs. We're being told it's a stinger around the neck, upper part of the shoulder area. Giants go 73 yards on nine plays and roughing the passer penalty against Vilma. Keeping the drive alive. Bradshaw with a touchdown run. Courtney Roby takes a look from Brian Keel at the 27 yard line and again flags come down. Personal foul, face mask or helmet opening by the defense, by the kicking team. That 15 yard penalty is enforced from the end of the return. First down. Well, you go back to 1930, and unbeaten, untied teams have played each other on week six, or later only four times in 73. Then in 2004, the Patriots, a run of three in a row. Again in 2007, beating the Cowboys and the Colts in 2007 as well. So here we are for just the fifth time in week six. And a pitch to Reggie Bush. And the former Heisman Trophy winner out of USC turns the corner, is run out of bounds. A gain of 10 on first down. I'll tell you, a heck of a block on the outside by Devery Henderson. You know, without that block, Reggie Bush isn't able to pick up near the yards that he did. He's able to seal that corner on Corey Webster and get Bush on around that block. He spot the ball a yard short of the first down, so second and one. And Bell will not get the first down yardage. We talked about it coming in Tom that uh, Sean Payton on Friday said I really think the team that runs the ball the best is going to be the team that ultimately wins this game and I kind of laughed at that and I said you know I bet you never would have said that in any other year you know because they couldn't run the ball that effectively but I'm not so sure that Sean Payton was even believing that I mean based on what they have done here in this first half. And the day that Drew Brees is having, I, I think I just keep letting Drew Brees drop back and throw that football until the Giants are able to do something more about it. Third down, converted into a first down by Mike Bell to the New York 47. You know, it's interesting when you when you talk about the Saints and their ability to run the football this year not a lot of changes really from previous years same offensive linemen with the exception of their left tackle same running backs but I think a couple things one there was a much bigger emphasis on running the football this offseason and then two the play of the defense and those two go hand in hand you run the ball better you play better defense when you play better defense you tend to run the ball better you look around the league and that's the way it goes. Breeze all day to throw looking for Colston contact and a flag. It looked like their feet just got caught up and that's unfortunate. I'm not sure I agree with that call. Corey Webster's in good position. He's looking back for the ball. No real contact. You know under other that's than defense number 23 is not playing the ball. 
ball yeah. placed at the spot of the foul. First down. I think he was playing the ball. I mean, he had his eyes back. He was looking for it. At the last minute, he did turn to see if he could find the receiver, but you know, no contact other than their feet getting tangled up. And I think even Marcus Colson, you see the smile on his face after that play. And I think he, I think he knew it shouldn't have been called as well. So they pick up 35 yards on that penalty. I'll tell you, there's no question, though, that the Saints receivers have these defensive backs on their heels. Brees drops it off to Evans. And the former Patriot is down to the six yard line. Evans making his eighth catch of the season. A very valuable addition, says Sean Payton. Heath Evans, along with David Thomas, coming from a winning atmosphere in New England. Yeah, that, that fullback position for the Saints is, is an important position on this team. You know, much more so than, than a lot of the other teams around the league. I mean, that guy's got to be a good blocker for, a, for the lead back. He's got to be someone who can, who can catch the football and run with it at times, too. Bell to the end zone. Touchdown. And a flag down. Right at the line of scrimmage. So we will wait. I think there was a reason why they were able to get to the edge. Offense number 44, 10 yard penalty, repeat second down. Of course, you talk about a guy and they get him for a penalty. That's the way that deal works. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why they were able to get Bell on the edge, was because of the hold. Here's Heath Evans, 44, and as I was saying, he's a heck of a lead blocker, but he comes in there on Clark, and he's got the left arm there, which keeps Clark from being able to turn that play back inside. Well, they back him up to the 17 yard line. Is it on Fred Robbins or was he drawn offside? Encroachment defense number 98. Five yard penalty for second down. The second and 15 goes to second and 10. Let's listen to Drew Brees. Yeah, he wasn't even trying to draw him off sides. He was just changing the play. And when he pulled out to audible, that's when they, they got the, the penalty. Three penalties against the Giants on this drive, covering 55 yards. Play action to the end zone. Touchdown, Lance Moore. The 100th touchdown pass is a Saint for Drew Brees. Well, again, they run this one off play action. They're going to pull left guard Carl Nix. And make it look like run. You see him here, he pulls, play action, and then you get more right in behind that. Because of the play action, again, we saw this earlier, you get the linebackers then biting on the run, having to respect that, and it opens up a big window there for the touchdown. Carney had the last point after block. This one is good. 27 points. And there's still five minutes left in the opening half. Bob Coughlin and the Giants trying to get it together in a hurry. Lance Moore leading the way, five receptions and a touchdown a moment ago. 12 yards out from Drew Brees. Saints have piled up 238 yards of offense against what was the number one ranked defense in the NFL through five weeks. Hickson deep in his own end zone and another big return for Dominant Hickson. Still on his feet and tackled at the 36 yard line by Chris Reese. So Hickson healthy again returning kicks again for the first time since he got hurt week two in Dallas. Well, he's given him a chance. There's no doubt on these last two kick returns what he's been able to do with field position. He hits it again in the middle 
And it looked like had he have been able to stay back to the middle of the field he might have been able to take that one to the house. There's the pass interference call that was so costly against Corey Webster. I don't agree with the call. And then the touchdown there at the end to Lance Moore and just great play action fake in the backfield opening up that lane. I tell you I think what we we already knew it and the Giants knew it. But Drew Brees isn't Jamarcus Russell or Matt Castle. Ahmad Bradshaw slips a couple of tackles and picks up a couple of yards. So 440 to play until halftime and after the big return the Giants great field position to try and cut into this 17 point deficit. There's good luck there on of Drew Brees and you know this isn't even surprising to me and I don't think it is anybody who's been following the New Orleans Saints and, and what he's been able to do there's nobody that prepares as hard as what he does on this team and he does a terrific job each and every week of getting himself ready to play I think Sean Payton said it best Drew Brees simply knows how to win. So does Eli. That's Kevin Boss the tight end the first down of the 15. You know, they're putting quite a bit of pressure now on this Giants offense to, to to match score with the Saints. And it's not about just getting down here and then having to settle for field goals because the, the Saints are coming away with touchdowns. But they do get the good return there by Hickson. And sometimes as a quarterback you see a game unfold like this and you start pressing a little bit thinking that you've got to do some things that you don't really want to have to do because you do want to score these points but so far I've seen Eli maintain some real patience. A little delay to Bradshaw and read beautifully by Scott Shanley. Shanley like the injured Scott Fujita a former Dallas Cowboy and both have played quite well since coming to the Saints. Well they have yeah I think that when they when they brought in Scott Shanley and Scott Fujita it appeared anyway that was that was uh, Sean Payton's first year that you thought well these guys are going to be here for a couple of years until they find somebody else but they've been exceptional players I mean they are really good players in fact Greg Williams said that they he knew they were good players but they both are much better players than than he ever anticipated. Take a peek ahead to the NFL on Fox next week a doubleheader weekend many will see the Vikings and the Steelers some the 49ers and the Texans you and I Mr. Aikman will be in your home turf Dallas the Falcons and the Cowboys and the Ford drive one NFL Fox Sunday pregame show begins noon Eastern nine Pacific. Well I'm looking forward to watching Matt Ryan again I saw him a couple of weeks ago against New England and well, what a what a good young player he is and a good young man. Second and nine to the end zone and pulled out of the arms of Scharfer by Mario Manningham and that is a touchdown for the Giants. And I'll tell you what Darren Sharper thought he had another one and when the ball was in the air I did too. He was in a position the ball was late. Eli was late on the throw it's a corner route and you've got to get this out in a hurry but Sharper gets a good break on it and he's wondering how he wasn't able to make that play. So it's a great job though by the New York Giants of answering the bell and going down there and coming away with a touchdown all set up by the return of Dominic Hickson. Point after a good by tides to make it a 10 point game 27 17 and Eli is getting some time himself you know when the Saints have been able to get pressure on Eli they've had to do it with some secondary blitzes their front four has not gotten much pressure on him either a great play there by Mario Manningham and, and then there's the return that set it all up a 68 yard return by Hickson they've missed him returning kicks Sonoris Moss took over for Hickson after he left the Dallas game in the first quarter with a knee sprain. They hear coaches say it all the time and I think oftentimes those of us are I'm guilty for sure you know you hear about oh, yeah offense defense special teams but when you have guys like Hickson 
what a difference that area can make in a team. Well, especially when you get into a game like this. You know, Jimmy Johnson used to always tell us that, you know, hey, you got to win two of the three phases. You got to win either on offense and defense, or you got to win either offense and defense, and then the special teams. And if you do that, you got a real good chance of winning the ball game. And in this game, I mean, you think about it, how poorly the Giants defensively have played. And it's the special teams and the Giants offense that have kept them in this ball game. And I know right now Tom Coughlin's got to be standing over there thinking we've just got to make one stop here in this first half and not let them come away with any more points prior to intermission. Well, lots of time for Breeze and the Saints. Roby with a good return. The 29 yard line. Weekdays makes the lunchtime your new primetime FoxSports.com. Delivers you lunch with benefits. You log on to check out new episodes of original sports shows delivered to your desktop every Monday through Friday at 1 Eastern. Jake Lazier tomorrow. Brian Billick comes your way on Tuesday and the rest of the lineup. When you're working with Brian Billick, you really punch that coach speak with Brian Billick. I mean, I you guys play that one up. Oh, there's no, it's the only <laughs> one we do play. <laughs> Reggie push on a first down carry to the 32 yard line. You know so many of these games Tom in the league today whether it's scoring points before the end of a half or certainly at the end of a game. I mean so many of these games are one possession games that you better be good when you get into these types of situations. Breeze great protection again post in the catch still on his feet all the way down to the 28 yard line. A 40 yard completion. Well, the Giants are simply just outmanned. I mean, they've, they've got too many good players across the board. They're in a zone coverage there. And I tell you, you play zone against Drew Brees with protection, you have absolutely no chance. And the only thing you can really do at this point is try to somehow bring pressure off the edge, get in Drew Brees' face, and hope that you can get there before these receivers are able to create any kind of separation. Holston in traffic. What a catch. And he's inside the 10. It's first and goal. He beat Terrell Thomas to the football. What are you talking about? Colston, who's 6'4 against Terrell Thomas at six foot. And, and Breeze throws that ball up high where only Marcus Colston can make the play. Two minute warning. And the Saints knock it on the door again. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by AT&T. Your world delivered. Well, few players in the era of free agency have made as little an impact as Drew Brees has made over his first three years and now a four season with the Saints. Took him to a championship game, an NFC championship game in 06. Been to two Pro Bowls and leads the NFL in passing yards over the last three years. He's been as good as it gets. I don't know how you can talk about the great quarterbacks in the league and not put him, you know, right near the top. And the the, the guys that we talk about, and rightfully so, are Peyton Manning and and Tom Brady, and you know he seems to be the one who's overlooked. And that shouldn't happen any longer. I mean, he's been terrific. And now you give him a running game and you give him a defense. Well, they're 4 0 for a reason. Reasons. Second and goal. They hand it to Meacham. And he's chopped down at the one yard line. That was played well defensively by the Giants. That's one thing that we've kind of gotten used to seeing from. From Sean Payton over the years. I mean, he likes to come with some different types of plays, reverses, screen plays. We've seen halfback passes and double reverses. And, you know, down here in this area of the field, you don't typically see a play caller call those types of plays. But I can assure you, Sean Payton has no reservations about calling anything that's on that sheet right there. Here's the action in the backfield thinking that maybe you can get them to overflow just a little bit but you know so much of their base offense certainly the passing game is they they can call anything that they want the running game even running right at them has been pretty effective. I don't know that misdirection was really needed there. 
Visa halftime report coming up momentarily. Highlights from around the league. And updated and up to the second statistics. Streep comes in as an extra body up front. Bell trying to leap into the end zone for a second time, and it looks like he's denied the goal line. Timeout called by the Giants. And now an interesting decision for Peyton. You have a 10 point lead, a fourth down and goal from inside the one. They've already gone once, fourth and goal today. Got a touchdown. Will he do it again? Well, guess what? He's going for it again. I mean, he, he could make this a two touchdown game going in at half. And like I said, the first time he went for it, we, we've seen him do it a lot, you know, over the course of his four years as a head coach. And even with the, of course, they had the success there earlier in the first quarter. Even with the lack of success overall, though, he's sticking with it. I tell you, though, I like this call. I like the call. I like that he's putting the trust, you know, in this offensive group. And I think he understands that, you know, look, the Giants have had their share of success here, moving the football and coming away with some points themselves. Fourth and goal from inside the one. Oh, almost anticipate play action here. Thomas, no signal. And he is denied the end zone on fourth down. That is a big stop for New York. Yes, it is. It's a good job by the defense there, not allowing the Saints offensively to get any kind of push. They hold their own and are able to make a key goal line stand. Well after the play flags. The ball was short of the goal line therefore it's the Giants ball first down after the play unsportsmanlike conduct on New Orleans. That's the distance to the goal. First down. Not sure what he meant there by half the distance to the goal. If in fact it's against New Orleans, it would get the New York Giants off the goal line. 15 yards, the ball be on the 15 yard yeah. line. Yeah, so that, you know, one, you don't make it. I mean, there's two things there. You don't make the touchdown, but at least you're going to give the ball to New York, you know, on the one yard line, basically about the six inch line. And instead, you get the penalty, and now you get them off the goal line, and they're able to operate with their entire playbook. With Time on the clock. So 55 seconds to play until halftime. It almost looked like Thomas just didn't stick his nose in there. He just never was able to get anything going, and there was enough of a push by New York defensively that where he wanted to go, he couldn't run, and he couldn't get out on the edge and then punch it across the goal line. And for any offensive player I mean that's frustrating when you think that you've only got so far to go to get a touchdown and you're not able to pick that up. Well, now apparently they're going to take a look to make sure. Upstairs in the final two minutes of the half. But this was not a touchdown. You see the great penetration there and OCU Manure is the one who who ultimately was able to bend him backwards and stop his forward progress. And I don't know that there's any kind of look that we're going to see that's going to show that he did in fact cross the goal line. Danny Clark along with Human Yura. There to halt the progress of Thomas. But that's a big momentum shift here if this stands that it's not a touchdown and I believe that it will. You know something that the Giants can feel good about the going in at halftime. Stands has called it's Giants ball first down. Well now if you're the Giants with less than a minute. Then you have well you're out of timeouts. Eli Manning operates out of the shotgun from his own 15. He's going to put it up. Manningham across the middle. 
and he's to the 34 yard line. And that's the weakness right now what the Saints are doing defensively they're going to run coverage on the boundaries they don't want to stop the, 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 the clock to stop and so the voids now in that coverage in this zone defense that they ran is going to be in the middle of the field and they're going to have to be quicker at getting the ball snapped after each play. Ball is loose on the hit from behind. Still loose. And loose again after Fujita watches as his teammate Shanley picks it up and then recovered in the end zone by Kevin Boss. And we're waiting on the officials to tell us exactly the ruling on the field. Well, Who has like, it and where? Yeah, it looks like Hockley is going to rule that he was down and that it's Saints ball. I think they're saying Shanley was down after the initial recovery. There's the backside blitz by Roman Harper. We've seen that now a few times in this first half with success. Shanley picks it up. And Eli just never feels that coming down the backside. And on the tail end of this, Shanley with the ball, and he he fumbles, but they ruled him down, and, and that was a good call as well. It looked like he was on the ground prior to the ball coming loose. And there's an injured giant Please down on the, the field. Game clock to 18. 18 seconds were on the clock when the runner was ruled down. Kareem McKenzie is down on the field for the Giants. That ball was just you, beginning to come loose. Yeah, I tell you, it's closer than what I initially thought. It looked like the ball started to come loose maybe before he did go to the ground. And McKenzie, you see right here, I mean, he steps on the ball, and, and that's why he's on the ground. So what you have here is if the play on the field, the ruling on the field is confirmed, the Saints are going to have the ball at the seven-yard line. But we'll see again if they believe that Shanley had possession. Well, I've got to believe, Tom, that they're going to they're going to review this entire play to make sure that they've got it right. But yet, I've seen I've not heard Ed Hockley indicate that that is what they're going to do. Ed Hockley now trotting to the near sideline as they take McKenzie off on a cart. We certainly hope he's okay. McKenzie in his ninth season out of Penn State left the Jets as a free agent to come to the Giants five years ago. And we'll go back and take another look at you know whether or not the ball was coming out at the end of this play when Scott Shanley you know had it in his possession. It, it, it's close but it looks to me like the ball is starting to come loose prior to him going to the ground and if that's the case then it would be the Giants ball it would be a safety is what it would be it would be recovered in the end zone but at least then you're not giving the ball to New Orleans with great field position going in potentially for a touchdown before the end of this half with 18 seconds left. Well, you talk about the roller coaster of emotion and of momentum here over the last 40 seconds on a fourth and goal inside the one the Giants defense stands tall denies Pierre Thomas the end zone for a touchdown that would have put him in front 34 to 17. Giants get the ball after a penalty on that play out at their own 15 they get a big pass play. And now the fumble and it looks like New Orleans is going to get it inside the 10 with a chance to score yet again. Here comes Ed Hockley. 
we reviewed whether the ball was fumbled down near the goal line and ultimately recovered by New York in the end zone. The ruling is, though, that the ball, although it had come from loose from a hand, it was still pinned between the player's arm and his shoulder pad. Therefore, he still had possession when his knee hit the ground. The ruling stands as called. It's New Orleans ball, first down. Not a lot of argument over there by Tom Coughlin. Well, we'll see if the Giants can keep New Orleans from getting into the end zone. 18 seconds remain. Saints do have a timeout left. Got it down at the line of scrimmage. Justin Tuck got a paw on it. Second down. Tell you the New York Giants are still pretty much sticking with a four man rush with without any pressure. That snaps a string of 15 consecutive completed passes by Drew Brees. Bush touchdown. You know, and what allowed the Saints to run the ball there was the fact that they had one timeout left. If they didn't score and they were in bounds, they could use it to stop the clock. Good job by Bushrod there on OCU Manure, and then look at Lance Moore. He doesn't block anybody but he didn't have to. He was in the way there and he allowed Reggie Bush to then get on the edge. What an unbelievable offensive display here in his first half. Against a very good Giants defense, 315 total yards of offense for the Saints. And for Drew Brees, well, the pictures tell you the story in the opening half. Well, what can you say? You come into a game like this, and as I said, the, the Giants defensively in the secondary are a little short-handed. You consider the fact that Kenny Phillips is on IR. Aaron Ross has been inactive all season long. And you know, when you put out the skill players that the Saints do with Marcus Colston and Devery Henderson and Meacham and Lance Moore, and then in addition to that, you know, some pretty good running backs and a quarterback with the accuracy and the acumen of Drew Brees, it's going to be a hard team to stop. I mean, you talk about what they've done yardage wise here in the first half. This was a defense. Coming into this game, that was only given up 210 yards total offense, you know, in the games, and the Saints have pretty much had their way with them. Saints have scored as many points in this first half as the Giants had allowed the entire season. And again, you got to remember the competition level. I mean, let's be honest about it. You know, outside of the opener against the Redskins, and then. Beating a good Dallas team in week two. Been a very fortuitous schedule for the Giants. Three straight weeks against teams that have combined for one win. Well, I, and I would agree with that. I mean, there's no question the Saints are a much better football team than the, those that the Giants have played here recently. But, you know, when we're talking about the New York Giants, I mean, this is a team that is expected to be contending for the Super Bowl at the end of the year. And expected to win their own division in the NFC East, and they're getting flat out embarrassed by the New Orleans Saints. I mean, this isn't even a ball game up to this point. Still a long way to go. Eli Manning going to take a knee. And on a homecoming Sunday for Manning, returning to the Superdome, where he used to grow up watching games as a kid, he's been watching a Saints quarterback light it up 34 17. Stay tuned. The NFL on Fox continues after a word from your local Fox station.
34 17 Giants will get the football to start the second half our first half numbers brought to you by direct TV. Well you look at how productive New Orleans has been offensively I mean 315 yards in one half of football is is really remarkable we saw that last week with the Giants offense against that Oakland defense but for the Saints to do it against a defensive unit that you know by everyone's account you'd say you know this is, a, this is a good defensive team but the thing that the Saints have done a great job of is protecting Drew Brees he's had very little pressure. Dixon's had a couple of big returns already in the game today. And brings the opening half or second half kick up out to the 28 yard line. Let's go downstairs to Pam Oliver. Pam. Well, Tom, the Giants quietly trudged into the locker room after that humiliating first half. My question to Tom Coughlin was, what do you change defensively? He says, we just got to get pressure on Drew Brees. He also said they're doing some nice things on play action that we've got to do a better job of defending. We were in position on a couple of those touchdown throws. He said, just didn't make any plays. Pam, thank you. Well, I guess the best thing right now is that at least the Saints didn't get the ball to start the second half. And the Giants get Brandon Jacobs back into the game. You may remember he had to leave in the second quarter after suffering a stinger in the shoulder and neck area. Yeah, he had that stinger and then he got banged up, you know, last week in Oakland. And that's kind of an ongoing thing with Brandon Jacobs because of his style of play. And you know, here's a running back, a big physical guy, as we know, but he has not yet made it through a 16 game schedule, you know, without having to miss some time. And that's why the backup, Ahmad Bradshaw, becomes even more important. Jacobs again, nowhere to go. Shanley was there. Initially slowed down due to the penetration of Tracy Porter from the corner. I tell you, there was a lot of guys there, and, and Will Smith does a great job of, of really extending this play out towards the sideline, 91. And then as he widens them, the linebackers there with Shanley and Velma, they're able to come up and make a play. And, and Will Smith healthy for the first time. You know, last year he was banged up pretty good that a lot of people didn't know about. Had a less than productive year, but he's playing well this year. Blake Clock got a three. They just do get it off. Manning looking down the field and overthrows the intended target, Dominic Hickson. Flag down right around the 40 yard line, which would be roughly five yards down the field from the first down marker. Saints are saying it's against the Giants. Yeah, so is Roman Harper. Pass interference, offense number 87. A pick, a penalty of decline. Brings up fourth down. Well, Dominic Hickson's on the outside. They're going to switch release this, so there's the contact. I guess that's where the flag came in and I disagree with that. That's just Hickson trying to get up the field and Steve Smith was going to the outside and that would that would be called a natural picking action. I, I don't agree with that call. Jeff Fingles in his 22nd year out of Miami. Low line drive to the near sideline and Reggie Bush picks it up. Hammered at the 25. Breeze and company had six possessions in the first half, scored five touchdowns. They'll get it in a moment. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Go to southwest.com, grab your bag, it's on. By Visa. Visa debit is easier than cash. More people go with Visa. And by Ford. Drive one. Stop for the Saints to begin the second half. And now Drew Brees in this offense after racking up 315 total yards of offense and 34 points in the first 30 minutes. Get it for the first time in the second stands. Ah. 
Encroachment, defense number 98, five yard penalty, first down. Mention Sean Payton in his fourth year as head coach of the Saints. His first year, they advanced all the way to the NFC Championship game. The last two years, failing to reach the playoffs, but an 0-3 record following a bye week. So he decided to change things up a little bit. Well, whatever they did, it worked. <laughs> Breeze looking for Henderson and batted away by C.C. Brown. Hey, Tom, I'm wondering if Drew Brees had to ice that arm down at halftime. I mean, the, as much as they threw it and as, and as well as he threw it, awfully impressive. Finally, you know, they take a shot down the field, and you've got C.C. Brown in, in good position to make a play. And I, I got to tell you, I mean, you look at the Giants defensively, and, and I mean, that's a heck of a defensive front. When they're not getting pressure, they have some problems everywhere else on the field. But... You know, against Dallas, they gave up over 200 yards rushing. What's happened here today, you start to question just how good is this defense really? Here, Thomas on second down. Picks up a yard, it'll bring up third and four. Well, going into the game, the trio of Tuck, Humanura, and Kiwanuka. That combined for nine sacks, just those three alone. Not a single sack of Drew Brees so far here today. Yeah, and I think you look at the last two weeks, and they got 11 of those sacks in those games. And against Dallas and against Tampa Bay, they didn't have any sacks. But I'm not so much worried about the sacks in this game. They just haven't gotten any pressure on them. A little bit of pressure that time, and wouldn't you know it, catches made and... Are they saying he was out of bounds? Yeah, it was a force they out, are. but yep. uh, there is no such rule any longer. And I, I like that the league took that out because it just removed a lot of the gray area for these officials in trying to determine whether or not the feet would have come down in the field of play. A good job there defensively by the Giants. Needing to make a stop. The offense wasn't able to do anything on their first possession of this second half. And not to give up points was big. Well, the first time we have seen Thomas Morstead punt in the game today. And he puts a charge into this one. All the way back to the seven yard line. Nixon turns the corner. Out across the 30 and out to the 35. He has certainly made an impact in the game today. Returning kicks and punts. Drew Brees, well, at one point when you hit on 15 in a row, you get frustrated when you miss on a pass. <laughs> Eli Manning and the Giants, a first and 10 from their own 35, trailing 34 to 17. Manning being chased by Grant, throws on the run. And makes a nice throw to Steve Smith. Boy, he sure does because he got flushed out of the pocket and to, to be able to move out to his right and deliver the ball, you know, like he did. The accuracy here on this throw, and this is really what we've been seeing from Eli, you know, throughout this season, right on the money there. And, and Steve Smith, I, I got to tell you, he, to me, he's been one of the big stories in the league through the first five weeks of the season. You know, he's leading the league in receptions and yards, and, and it is not a surprise. Because this guy's got some real skills. Good enough for a first down on the give to Ahmad Bradshaw. Nearly an entire half still to play here in New Orleans. And even though the Saints have clearly dominated this game so far, the Giants find a way to stick one in the end zone on this drive. They're down 10 and a lot of time left. No question. And I think that. You know this offense has, has got to feel pretty good still. I mean they've, they've got 17 points. They got to feel good about some of the things that they're able to do. And then defensively, I think that last stop was key for them. And starting to gain a little confidence themselves. Put it in the hands of the rookie Hakeem oh. Nicks, a number one pick out of North Carolina. Last week he led the Giants four receptions. For 49 yards and a nine-yard touchdown. 
I mean, isn't it interesting coming into this season? The big question mark was this wide receiving core of the New York Giants and, and how well they would do. And they really were looking for a third receiver. Somebody had to step up. And they were hoping that'd be Mario Mar Manningham, which it has been, but he's not the third guy any longer. He's number two. Cuts it back the other way. That's a good run for a first down to the 39. Look, there might have been some movement early, you know, on the Saints. Didn't get the call, but that was all Ahmad Bradshaw. Saints did a nice job of bottling that up, but he's just so quick and so hard to see behind that line that he was still able to get the first down when really there wasn't much there. Kareem McKenzie, by the way, left with an injured groin. The Giants' right tackle in the opening half. Manning intercepted by Jabari Greer. And again, Manning under heavy pressure. And just threw it up for grabs, and Greer went to get it. But you see Eli Manning talking to Ahmad Bradshaw. That's the concern, his protection. He was thinking that Ahmad Bradshaw would pick up Harper. He did not. Forced him to throw the ball earlier than he wanted to. Interception. Nine twenty-one to play in the third quarter. New Orleans in front 34 to 17 after the turnover a moment ago by Eli Manning. Jabari Greer getting the interception. First and 10 cents from their own 29. This is Pierre Thomas. Cuts it back to the inside and picks up a yard. Go back and take a look at the interception and Roman Harper is going to come here on the blitz and you've got Ahmad Bradshaw. He's supposed to pick that up. But he goes the opposite way. You can see at the end of this. So Eli's thinking it's going to be protected at the last minute. He's got to throw it much sooner than what he wanted to. And you can obviously see why Eli Manning would be as frustrated and as what he is. Finds Colston, soft spot in the middle of the field. He's close to a first down out to the 38 yard line. You know that's not to absolve Eli Manning of any responsibility either though. I mean when you see that and you do have someone in your face you recognize that it did not get picked up as it was supposed to. Then you can't just float one up there either and allow a guy to make an easy interception. Third down in a yard and it's a first down on the give to Reggie Bush. This is something the Saints offense has not done in a long time really since Deuce McAllister was healthy and a regular part of their backfield and that's run the football and run it well and and this year run it frequently. These two teams are two of only four in the NFL that actually run the ball more frequently than they throw the ball. Hard to believe in the Saints. Isn't it? Yep. Really hard to believe. But they like throwing it too. Colston all the way down to the 34 yard line. He is having a monster game. This goes back to what we were talking about, what they do in practice. Now, he didn't have to throw this on his back shoulder, and I don't think Drew Brees was trying to, but because they work on these types of throws all week long, that, that's second nature. I and mean, there's a lot of receivers in this league that would have a hard time making that type of catch. But you go and watch them practice during the week, and on Friday, they do it routinely. Colston 135 receiving yards. Of course, he's out of Hofstra. Well, you talk about a pickup. That one incomplete. That might be the worst pass I've ever seen Drew Brees throw. <laughs> <laughs> that, thing, that thing wasn't even close. But I will tell you, the wide receiving core for the Saints is a it's an impressive group. Not a lot of people could probably name you two guys that play wide receiver for this team. I go back to last year. Drew Brees threw the ball for 5,000 yards. 
and not one guy on their team had a thousand yards received. It's amazing. It's a very unselfish group. You talk to the coaches, they say they, they won't say four words amongst them. And they just go out and play. They love playing, they do a great job of it. It makes it easy on Drew Green. Hard running by Mike Bell down to the 31 yard line. You know, in fact, Sean Payton was talking about it. He said the challenge that he has is during the week because he does have so many good players in that wide receiving room that the, the challenge for him is trying to come up with some plays for each guy when you're putting in the offensive game plan on Wednesday so that they can all get a little excited about what their role is going to be in that given week. And, and that is a challenge. When the game plan gets put in on Wednesday, everybody immediately looks to see, all right, well, what plays am I going to get? And you got to give enough of them to each of those players so that they don't start sulking. Timeout on a third and seven. A pass defense for the Giants. Now you got to remember the teams they have played and you hate to keep going back to that but you know the numbers don't lie. One win among the last three teams they faced. Romo had some big turnovers in the game but threw the ball rather effectively in the win over Dallas in week two. Defense number 85 five yard penalty. It's third down. So now third and seven goes to third and 12 after the early start by David Thomas. And, and Tom, I, I, the Giants defensively knew what, I mean, they knew what they had been facing, you know, and they knew that the offenses and the passing games of those teams wasn't all that great, but they dominated them. I and mean, they, they did what they should have done against weaker opponents. And we knew and they knew coming into this game that facing Drew Brees is going to be a real challenge. Third and 12 blitz coming. Jump ball for Colston. He's got it. Inside the five. Flags comes down. The question is, did Colston go out of bounds and then come back in to make the catch? Yes, he did. Barry Anderson, the Side judge. Illegal touching by the offense, number 12. The player stepped out of bounds and then he came back in, reestablished, and was the first to touch the ball. That's a five yard penalty. Repeat third down. Third and seven all of a sudden has gone to third and 17 after back to back penalties. And well, right now the Saints are out of field goal range. Well, the Giants can't afford to give up any more points. I mean, really, if they're going to. If they're going to have a chance, and there's six minutes left in the third quarter, and if the Saints are able to get any kind of points here, it's going to be awfully tough. Awfully tough on the Giants based on what we've seen of New Orleans defensively. And they've made it hard on this Giants offense also. I'm right here, Peter. Did he get to the 24 yard line to convert? And right there. For a first down is Lance Moore, so they convert on third and 17. I just don't think you can play these guys zone coverage when you're not getting any more pressure. You see the linebackers, the linebackers were all at about eight yards deep. Well, they had to go 17 yards for a first down. There was no reason not to get underneath those intermediate throws of Lance Moore. Instead, they play shallow and they open up just a cavern. They're in the middle for Lance Moore to be able to complete that pass. 300 yard passing day now for Drew Green. On the ground of Pierre Thomas. He pushes the pile inside the 15 down to the 12. 32nd career 300 yard passing game for Drew Brees. 26 of the 32 has come, have come as a saint. A lot was talked about over the last two games. He hadn't even thrown for 200 yards. Did not have a touchdown in either of those previous two games. 
And everybody's wondering, hey, Drew Brees isn't playing so well. Well, you know, they were able to win some games they wouldn't have been able to win in previous years with a running game and great defense. I don't think anybody should have been too worried about Drew Brees. Play action to push. Wide open touchdown, Colston. Kevin Dockery was in coverage and he was nowhere to be found. They go play action again. They've had a lot of success with this in this ball game. And he comes outside to Colston. Now, I'm not sure what Dockery was doing. Good by Carney. We still have 410 to play in the third quarter. And the Saints marching in the Superdome over the Giants. Marcus Colston, seven receptions, 147 receiving yards, and now a touchdown. The sixth different Saint to score a touchdown in this game. Man. <laughs> Lobbered at the 21 by Courtney Roby. You go back and take a look at that touchdown, and you're going to see CC Brown, 41. He comes up. And on the outside, Kevin Dockery actually thought he was going to have safety help. That's why he let him go. And that's why Colston was as open as what he was. So it's easy to get on the DBs of the Giants with all these passing yards. But generally for the Giants, they're able to keep other teams from throwing the ball all over the field Illegal because of pressure. 12 minutes of vital offense. Five yard penalty. It's first down. Well, there has been zero pressure on Drew Brees today. Well, and that's really been the bottom line, Tom. I mean, when when you talk about the Giants defensively and what they've been about, it's always been about the pressure that they've been able to get on the quarterback. And if they're not doing that, they've got problems, especially when they're as thin as what they are. Pitch it to Bradshaw. He beats a tackler and carries out to the 22. Let's go back to Los Angeles game break time to Kurt Menefee. Well, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers hadn't scored a kick return touchdown in the first 31 years as a franchise, but suddenly they've got three over the last three seasons. Sammy Strouder, 97 yarder, pulls them to within seven of Carolina in the fourth quarter. Tom, Troy, and Pam, that's about the only thing the Saints haven't done in your game is return one for a score. Well, you look at the NFC South, Saints undefeated, trying to stay that way. Atlanta, we'll see them next Sunday in Dallas. Second down reception by Nichols. Talked about Eli Manning coming back home. You know, he grew up about two and a half miles from the, from the Superdome here and came to the games with R2. And, when Archie was doing the broadcast for the New Orleans Saints radio broadcast and you know this dome has not been good to a lot of people I, mean, I started my I started my career here as a rookie in 89 and didn't have much success. There's Archie Manning right there and his family Olivia and daughter in law. You're not going to meet a better guy than Archie Manning. Well, that's for sure. Great family. Yep. Every GM around the league wishes they'd had more sons. <laughs> Eli putting it up. Contact made. No flag. Slightly underthrown. Roman Harper right there with Knicks. And it's three and out for the Giants. They were just trying to get something down the field. And, you know, he had a step on him. He had him against Harper there. And, and Eli just was not able to get enough on it to get it out and hit him in stride. Well, the Giants will punt it away. Reggie Bush stands back at his own 30. Good punt by P. 
Eagles. Bush wrapped up immediately at the 33-yard line. Well, here coming in, this is clearly among the marquee, if not the marquee matchup in the entire NFL here in week six. And Latroy, if you're the Giants, you got to be wondering, what have we run into here with this New Orleans team? Well, and I think they knew coming in this is going to be a tough game. As I said, this is a hard place to play. And this is a good football team with the New Orleans Saints. I know, I know that the Saints, you know, a lot of people, when you start talking about the good teams around the league, even though they had been undefeated, they weren't getting a lot of the recognition nationally. And I think they felt that this was a game, kind of a statement game for them, if you will, just showing a lot of people that they are, in fact, for real. I think a lot of people were questioning some of the teams that they had faced also. Mike Bell on first down out to the 38 yard line. You know, you, you look at the Saints and you know, he started the year against Detroit, a team that didn't win a game last year, but they certainly opened some eyes when you saw them going to Philadelphia in a dominant win there over the Eagles. And then in week four, they played a red hot New York Jets team here in the dome. And even though their offense never really clicked in that game, they found a way to win to go to 4 0 before the bye week. Yeah, but the quarterbacks that they had faced, Matthew Stafford making his first start, Kevin Cobb making his first start, Mark Sanchez making his fourth start as a rookie. I think this was the game they felt would really show them a lot. Colston breaks out of one tackle, first down. And, and you know, from that standpoint, defensively for New Orleans, this is a game that kind of legitimizes them a little bit. And you know, once again, Marcus Colston, you know, finding that hole. You know, this guy has really come on and and been a great acquisition for this team. I mean, when you consider a seventh round pick, and last year he missed some time because of injury, but his first two years in the league to have over a thousand yards receiving in those two seasons, 98 catches in 07. I mean, I don't know where you start when you start trying to shut down one of these wide. He push. Well behind the line of scrimmage. He's dropped all the way back at midfield. That'll be a loss of nearly eight. That's about the only thing they haven't been able to do today is get Reggie Bush going. I think when you look at their running backs, I, I, I'm not so sure Reggie Bush shouldn't be playing wide receiver, to be quite honest with you. I've seen him do some things at the wide receiver position as far as releases that you just don't see many of the top wide receivers do. And as far as a running back, he's he's kind of been a non-factor as far as their running game and what they're doing with regards to that. He's, he definitely has a skill set that they can use, but I don't know that it's running the football. Play action, Breeze letting it fly. And underthrown. Was under pressure was Breeze. He had Devery Henderson headed to pay dirt. Well, they're able to get some pressure on him this time with Justin Tuck. He's able to get in there just after Breeze lets it go, and it's probably why Breeze wasn't able to get enough on this ball because Henderson runs the out and up, gets by Thomas, but Drew Breeze just with the pressure, not able to really step into that throw. Boy, the third time the entire game, and somebody's put a hit on Drew Breeze. But that's nothing new for this offensive line. It doesn't matter who they play, they protect their quarterback. Third down. Crowd wanted a horse collar tackle. They're not going to get it. Fred Robbins brings down Reggie Bush. Yeah, in line play between the tackles. No such thing as a horse collar on a running back. So that's the end of the third quarter. 41 17, New Orleans. And we're back after a word from your local Fox station. Five unbeaten teams colliding today in the Superdome. And it's been all home team with a quarter to play.
They get hit in the end zone and then check back up. Yep, touch back out to the 20. Been a rough homecoming for Eli Manning. We mentioned that Manning had never played in a Superdome. Both of his brothers played games here in high school, playing in state football championships. But Eli had never played here before. They had a game scheduled for, what, four years ago, and Katrina wiped that one out, moving the game to New York. It's always been a hard place to play for opposing teams, and it's even more difficult when, though, when you're playing the Saints and, and they're as good as what they are this year. I mean, I have been really impressed with, with what I have seen, not just here today, but really of this New Orleans team, specifically the defense. We're here in the early going of 09. With a quarter to go, batted in the air, incomplete. You know, we talked about Greg Williams coming in and the job that he's done. I mean, outside of Darren Sharper and getting a few more players healthy, the only difference on that side of the ball is this man right here, Greg Williams. And the first thing that he wanted to fix was the secondary. They had given up the third most big plays, big passing plays in the NFL a year ago. This year, they've given up the second fewest. So he turned it around immediately from that standpoint. But more than anything, he brought some real toughness to this group. And that's something that they had lacked. This team defensively ranked in the bottom in virtually every category. And right now, they're near the top. Manning throws it behind Manningham, third down and 10. Of course, many believe Greg Williams was going to be named the head coach of the Washington Redskins two years ago. He had been a head coach with Buffalo, was let go there, and then was the assistant head coach with the Redskins for four years. And then out of left field, they hired Jim Zorn after interviewing Williams, who wound up leaving the Redskins altogether. Well, everything's going on in Washington. I'm sure he's thrilled that he didn't get that job in Washington. Just like Sean Payton's thrilled he didn't take that head job in Oakland a few years ago. Oh. Third down and 10. Eli, good protection. Crossing route. Nix has it inside the 40, down to the 30, and run out of bounds at the 20. Well, they're finally able to stretch the defense a little bit by running Kevin Boss up the field, and then they get Nix underneath that. He was lined up on the outside, but they get Boss through the middle, get the safeties off the top, and then when you run Nix on the square end, it opened up a big lane. Of course, Steve Smith threw a little coverage also. It's one of the better pass plays we've seen from them today. Dominic kicks it. And we're probably not seeing it as much as what we've seen in previous weeks from this Giants team, but I, I do like this wide receiving core. I, I think they're a good group. I, I really like Steve Smith and what he's been able to do on the outside. We knew he was a great slot receiver, but he's got great explosion. He's good in and out of breaks. Mario Manningham, you know, Team Nix, Dominic Hickson, when he's fully healthy. I mean, they got a good group. I, I think this is more. Uh, a reflection on just how good this secondary is for the Saints. Let's come and try to get it into the hands of Brandon Jacobs. And he is thrown to the mat. And nearly some punches thrown there. A lot of jawing going on. Remy Adel and Brandon Jacobs. Not sure. Adele ever knew that he didn't catch the ball. Yeah, I don't I don't think that he did either and I and I'm not sure who I would take in that fist fight. <laughs> I mean it looks to me like Brandon Jacobs maybe boxed somewhere before. He talks about wanting to get in that fight game. Manning drops it off to Brandon Jacobs. And he is stopped at the 20. Fourth down. And Tom Coughlin going to go for it down 41 to 17 with nearly a full quarter to play. It kind of takes the decision making right out.
Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Lipitor. By Ram, the truck that never backs down from a challenge. And by Bud Light, with the just right taste that's not too heavy, not too light, the difference is drinkability. Fourth down and eight for the Giants at the Saints 20. We're showing another blitz by Roman Harper off the edge right here. And here he comes. They pick him up. Catch made and trying to lunge for a first down is Dominic Kixon, and he's got it right at the 10 yard line. And that time they are able to block up Roman Harper, which gave Eli the time that was necessary in order to complete that pass. Ahmad Bradshaw picks him up, and a good catch there by, by Hickson. First and goal for the Giants, trailing 41 to 17. Back to the end zone and batted away by Darren Sharper. <laughs> uh, there's another one that old Sharper thought that he might have been able to get. I'll tell you, when you're throwing the corner routes, we saw it earlier in the ball game. When you're throwing the corner route against him when there's not much separation, that is a hard throw to make. You, know, you leave all the angles then to the defender and you know sharper and talking with him you ask him how come you've been able to make so many interceptions yeah you're always around the ball and he says the big thing is, is I catch him you know other guys get opportunities they just don't catch him but he's had two chances here today that he's dropped. Virginia was a high school quarterback who went to William and Mary. So that tells you right from the get-go, he wasn't a heavily recruited quarterback coming out of <laughs> high school. He did play defensive back. He said, yeah, the coaches told me I'd get a chance to play quarterback well, at you, William and Mary. You think if he had been recruited by Florida, he'd have gone to Florida? Is that, <laughs> is that what you're saying? Or, or maybe Michigan or well, I don't know or about Ohio Michigan. State. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> he'd have told Michigan no way. <laughs> To the end zone again and complete. Shepard's closing ground on Manningham, fourth and goal. Now he'd have probably played at UCLA, I think. <laughs> oh, I would hope so. We could have used him. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a big play here, obviously. I mean, if the Giants have any chance, this is one they've got to be able to hit. 11th play of the drive, fourth and goal. Manning lost it. What a catch made by Brandon Jacobs for the touchdown. Wow. Now flags are down. Right at the line of scrimmage. What a job by Eli Manning escaping trouble. Yeah, usually when you have that, it might be an illegal man downfield, offensive lineman. Like Sean O'Hara might have been, been down the field. We'll wait and get the call. Holding offense number 60. 10 yard penalty for two fourth down. Well, you caught it, O'Hara, on the hold. Sean's been a mighty good player for a long time. Yes, he has. Last year going to his first Pro Bowl, well deserved. I think Sean was saying it wasn't me. And the officials may have announced the wrong number. Yeah, I initially thought that Sean O'Hara was actually downfield. And you can tell he certainly doesn't agree with the call. Now he's the center. Number 60. And once the quarterback starts scrambling and they see that, they're not real certain then what he's going to do. If he's going to take off running, 
or if he's going to pull up and throw and he's, he is he is downfield. But I didn't see a hole. Oh hang on hang on. Well the Giants on fourth and goal backed up to the 20 they're going to go ahead and send out times for the field goal try. A 38 yard attempt. Is good. Blue Breeze will get back to work when we return. 12.09 to go, and the Saints leading big. A frustrating afternoon for Brandon Jacobs and the New York Giants. Still a long way to go and a 21 point spread. 12.09 to play in the final quarter. Saints guarding against the onside kick. But Tides kicks it away. Through the end zone, the Saints will get it into 20. Harris still discussing with the officials that holding call on him denying the touchdown. Well, and he's, you know, the officials telling him that he saw him clutch the defender and grab him, and, and that's not the case. I mean, in fact, there wasn't an offensive lineman on the field that held anybody, so it wasn't even like they got the wrong number. Well, that was a, that was a big penalty. I mean, you're talking about the difference in four points, and you know they could. At 17 points, I mean, this thing's a, a long way from being over with as much time as left on the clock. I'm not sure what, what they saw on that one. Saints going to burn some of that time and put it on the ground of Pierre Thomas. He gains three on first down. Tomorrow, it's game three of the American League Championship Series. The scene shifting to Anaheim. The Yankees will send out Andy Pettit against Jared Weaver. Coverage of game three in the ALCS begins tomorrow, 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific, in high def only on Fox. And certainly Alex Rodriguez escaping disappointing postseasons of the past so far for the Yankees here in 09. Mr. October. Huh? <laughs> Him and Reggie, right? If you don't remember Reggie, I guess you could say that. Big gainer for Pierre Thomas. Out close to midfield. Pierre Thomas, an undrafted rookie free agent, signed three years ago. Well, I think this is when that running game really comes in handy when you're trying to end a ball game with a big lead and not having to rely on throwing the football in order to pick up first downs. This is a nice luxury that this New Orleans team now has. Second best rushing team in the NFL. And 113 rushing yards, 72 of them for Thomas. You know, in previous years, Tom, they were never going to be a team that piled up a lot of yards. It was more about yards per carry. And you know, this year, looking at that, they have they have run the ball well in every game, whether it's total yards or yards per carry, however you want to really look at that information. The Saints have done a good job of running the ball. Bell. Bell runs hard. Well, he and Pierre Thomas are, are a little different style of guys, and you're right. Mike Bell is more of a downhill, physical type runner. To whereas Pierre Thomas, he, he's a little niftier guy. He's he's able to make some people miss, and yet he's got some power himself. He does a good job of finishing off some runs. You know, so so many times. I mean, I remember back when I was playing. Emmett Smith was a three-down back. I mean, we didn't have anybody else. In fact, a lot of times we barely even had a backup. 
And now it is so rare to see that in the league. You pretty much have to have two bats in today's game. Looked like Barry Cofield jumped early. I don't give the Saints a first down if it's against him. Encroachment defense, number 96. Five yard penalty results in a first down. You know, again, it goes to show you about good scouting. Or catching lightning in a bottle. I mean, there's a little bit of both. We talked about Pierre Thomas, an undrafted free agent coming out of Illinois. For Mike Bell, he was an undrafted player who signed with Denver in 2006. And that year he rushed for 677 yards. Only the fifth undrafted player going all the way back to 67 to rush for over 500 yards in a season. Hey, it's over. And then, of course, they wanted to turn him into a fullback. He wasn't happy about that in Denver. He got injured. Ultimately released by Denver, signed with Houston. And then a month later, they let him go. New Orleans signed him. He played in four games last year. And this year, he's turned out to be a huge pickup after Pierre Thomas was hurt the first two weeks of the season. Well, you look at how important scouting is. How about Marcus Colston, a find in the seventh round? And it goes back to remember when Mike Ditka was here, and he traded the entire draft for Ricky Williams. And he said, well, those guys weren't going to make the team anyway. Well, yeah, they do. There's a lot of seventh rounders in this league. There's a lot of late round picks in this league that are making a lot of contributions. Time to send it back to Los Angeles to Curtin Menifee for a game break. Well, the Washington Redskins in deep trouble. Collins now in at quarterback after they benched Jason Campbell in the first half. Tom Mahali with a sack. Kansas City leads it 14-6, closing seconds. Looks like Chiefs will get their first win after losing nine in a row. Tom? What do you think Jim Zorn's going to be uh, doing next weekend? I tell you, you know, I had the Redskins the last two weeks, and, you know, Zorn is such a good guy and a good man. Perhaps uh, named a head coach a little prematurely after he had never been a coordinator. But man, life is tough on Jim Zorn. Life's pretty good for Drew Brees. Today's game is sponsored by Sprint. This is the NFL Now, only from Sprint, the Now Network, official wireless service sponsor of the NFL. This entire city, this entire region trying to get its legs back underneath it and really doing a nice job. Great hospitality here, the great food here. But after Hurricane Katrina, and then shortly thereafter, Hurricane Gustav, this town really starting to feel good about itself again, and especially about this football team. Completion to Robert Meacham inside the five, down to the one-yard line. Well, Kevin Dockery was in a great position and then he just let up for whatever reason. I'm not real sure he's playing it well. He's in a good spot and then he just got kind of got lost. And he started going backwards and, and Meacham kept going and. Hey, the Saints they're, they're keeping their foot on the pedal right now. Reef has checked in as an extra big body along the offensive line. First and goal, they spotted at the two. And timeout is called. Play clock winding down. 7.07 to play. Got a lot going on here. We thought the Saints had called a timeout when, in fact, they had not started the play clock correctly. So the Saints were not charged with a timeout. And then Tom Coughlin's going to challenge this catch by Meacham. Yeah, if it's all a continuous act, then you do have to hold on to the ball as you go to the ground. But he does not make this catch as he's going to the ground. He takes a few steps and then he goes out of bounds. And it's once he's out of bounds that the ball actually becomes dislodged. And it's you know I'm, I'm looking at it here saying that this this should be ruled a completion. I mean at this point if you're Tom Coughlin why not. Well actually it even looks like it 
might have come loose before he even went out of bounds. And then the question would be, you know, did the ball go through to the end zone? It didn't look like it did, that the Saints would still maintain possession. I mean, Saints are standing there like they're ready to play football. And we're still waiting on. Well, I don't think these guys are right here. They, no. don't, they don't have their helmets on. <laughs> they're still waiting on Ed Hockley. Still checking in with Tom Sifferman, the replay official today. And a rough go for the New York Football Giants on this Sunday in New Orleans. Gave up over 300 yards of offense in the first half. The Saints are knocking on the door at 500 yards of offense, seven yards shy of that. The Saints have kind of done to the Giants today what the Giants have been doing to some other teams the last few weeks. Now the decision. The receiver caught the pass, took three steps, and then was tackled. He lost the ball while being tackled, not in the process of going to the ground. Therefore, the pass was complete. It was fumbled forward out of bounds. It returns to the spot of the fumble. New Orleans ball, first down. Robert Meacham missed his entire rookie season with a knee injury, came back last year, and averaged over 23 yards per reception. Man, I mean, they've got a little bit of everything in this offense. They've got the home run hitters and Beecham and Henderson, an outstanding tight end and shocking. Great possession receivers and Lance Moore, along with a tight end Thomas. We talked about the running backs, able to run the ball, catch the ball. And then you got Colston, who's their star. And a touchdown on the give to Heath Evans. The seventh different player for the Saints, seven, to score a touchdown in this game. Well, you talk about all the weapons that they have offensively, and then, you know, this is really what you wanted to see. You wanted to see the Saints be able to run the football from that part of the field and run it in for a touchdown, and that's what they did with Heath Evans. Got started, we knew it was big. We didn't think it would be this easy. 48 to 20, the Saints in front. Fox tonight, the all new Simpsons 20th Treehouse of Horror, followed by an all new Cleveland show, Family Guy, and an all new American Dad. It all starts with an all new Brothers, 7 Eastern, 6 Central tonight on Fox. Jeremy Shockey had a good start to this game, including a touchdown. He's had a quiet second half. Uh, he's okay with that. You can tell. I mean, he's all smiles, and this this was personal for him. I mean, he came out early in the week and talked about it, and then the reporters kept asking him about it as the week moved along, and then he just stopped answering those questions. But there was no doubt that this this meant a lot. And you know, in his words earlier in the week, he just felt that he had been disrespected. For a guy that had done so much for an organization for six years, four time Pro Bowler while he was there in New York. And uh, I'll tell you, I know that they feel good about having him here in New Orleans. He, he was not healthy last year. This year he is. And he's made great contributions. I remember when he first came onto the scene there with New York as a rookie. And I said, this. This guy may end up being the greatest tight end of all time. He had some injuries. I mean, but he was absolutely phenomenal. I don't know that he's ever going to get back to that kind of play, but he's still quite a talent. Picked up by Hickson. First time they've slowed him down today. You know, you go back to Shockey, and really the unhappiness started when he broke his leg against the Redskins in the 14th game of that 2007 season. Obviously put on IR, his year was over. 
He wasn't on the team plane going to Phoenix for the Super Bowl. He didn't stay in the team hotel. He wasn't allowed on the sideline for the game. Sat up in a luxury box and and really that's what started what he said later would lead to a bitter taste in his mouth before he was traded the day before training camp last year. Well I, I you know it's worked out for both parties. The Giants have moved on. They've been successful. The Saints are happy to have him. And I know Jeremy's happy to be in New Orleans. Receiver screen to Hicks into not full New Orleans defensively. That'll be gain of two. I think right now looking at this game you got to kind of ask yourself why is Eli Manning still in the game. You know when you look at the fact that they've got some tough games coming up. He had the injury he has the inner injury to the foot. They were able to get him out of the game last week. Well you know this game with six and a half minutes to play is over and uh, I'm a little surprised real surprised actually that he's still on the field. With that right heel here today that he injured a couple of weeks ago against Kansas City. That one batted down by Darren Sharper. Darren Sharper playing up around the line of scrimmage and then he comes on the blitz. And you know, typically he is playing deep. I mean, that's where he's at his best. That's where he can keep the ball in front of him and go make plays, as we've talked about. But Greg Williams has has said that you know there will be times in a given game I want to show Darren Sharper up around the line of scrimmage just to break some tendencies so future opponents won't think that they can determine what it is we're doing with our coverages just based on where Darren Sharper is going to be. Put it down. Eli fires down the middle. In and then out of the hands of Smith that looked like Tracy Porter jarred it loose. Good route down the middle of the field and a good throw. You know, anytime you're throwing the ball down the middle with that coverage and safeties converging, they're going to be contested. You know, so you pretty much anticipate as a receiver that once you catch the ball, you're going to get hit. And Steve Smith, who has done a great job of hanging on to those, wasn't able to there. Only two catches today for Smith, who came in as the NFL's leader in receptions and receiving yards. Under six minutes to go, and this Saints offense will get another shot. And I mean, right from the opening possession, when they went down the field, scored a touchdown, over 300 yards of offense in the first half. They're five yards away from 500 yards of offense in the game. Seven different Saints have scored touchdowns, and they're just shaking their head and now Drew Brees is going to get the final 557 off. Well, you kind of got the feeling at least you know, that first possession to go back to that and the way that they went down the field. Now there was the penalty that kept the drive alive but on that second possession when they went down again you kind of had the feeling that wow the Giants better score a lot of points in this one if they're going to hang in with them. Mark Brunel in his 17th season takes over at quarterback for Drew Brees. So the final numbers today on Breeze, just sensational. He hit on 23 out of 30. At one point, hit on 15 in a row. 369 yards, four touchdowns without an interception. You know, there was a time, you see that 369 yards passing. There was a time that if a quarterback threw for over 300 yards, it was not a good thing. You were going to lose. Coming into this weekend, this year, quarterbacks that threw for 300 yards in a game had won 75% of those games. Wow. Does that surprise you? It, it, it does not surprise me. What, what, it, what it tells me is that in the last 10 years, this has really become a passing league. You know, and yet we still hear coaches talk about running the football and stopping the run. And, you know, those things are important. I'm not saying that they're not. But this league has has been it's not becoming it has been for the last 10 years a quarterback driven league and you better be able to throw the football if you're going to win in this league. Ready? 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 Ready?
Bulls going all the way back to 1969. And in quite honesty, who would have believed that would happen against this New York defense? I don't think anybody saw that coming. You know, four or five touchdowns, maybe. Three, likely. Seven, no. Well, I'll tell you, we don't, I don't give game balls, but if I was given a game ball, I'd give a game ball to each one of those offensive linemen for the New Orleans Saints. Because I, I, to go back to what you just said, Tom, I, I agree that who would have ever thought, yeah, we know that this is a good Saints offense, but who would have thought 500 yards against the New York Giants? And that defensive front is, they're special. I mean, Matthias Kiwanuka and Osi Umanure and Justin Tuck, I mean, that group is, they're a hard group to block. And teams have known that for a long time. And Drew Brees, there wasn't a lot of bodies around him today. And that, that line, I, I agree, they're a little bit like where the Giants were several years ago, a group that didn't get a lot of attention and recognition. This Saints offensive line, it, it's about time that they do. You see saw some of those numbers a moment ago. Points allowed in a game by the Giants. Yards allowed in a game by the Giants. Picks it. Stepping up the field to punt. And brings it to midfield. A Fox doubleheader comes your way a week from today. Game one, a good one, the Vikings and the Steelers. In game two, we will be in Dallas for the Falcons and the Cowboys. The Ford Drive One Fox NFL Sunday pregame show begins at noon Eastern. 9 a.m. Pacific. You know, I heard earlier today that with the Atlanta Falcons starting tonight against Chicago, their next four opponents are against teams that will be coming off a bye week. You know, somewhere there was a scheduling problem in New York when that happened. To give a team two weeks to prepare, four weeks in a row. Cut down is Smith. By Randall Gay. He was a starter last year after signing as a free agent from New England is David Carr, who came on to play quite well in relief of Eli Manning last week, is in the game for the first time. Yeah, this is his fourth game in a row where he's gotten a little play now. First down catch made by Hakeem Nix. Of course, they, they, they liked it better when he was playing the previous three games when they were playing with a big lead. Of course, with this victory today, the Saints will become the unofficial state champion of New York or New Jersey, whichever you prefer. Knicks, a touchdown reception. Run by David Carr. A 37 yard touchdown for Nix, who's now scored a touchdown in three straight games. The car hung in there pretty good. He got sandwiched at the end of that play, but laid it out beautifully. I'm not sure what Tracy Porter was doing. He he was just looking inside and whether he thought he was going to get more help than what he got, but Nix just ran right by and Got himself a touchdown. That was Usama Young who was back at safety and he was taking over late in the game for Darren Sharp. Point after is good. Let's take a peek ahead at what's coming up for the New Orleans Saints. Next week they go to Miami. And then a big divisional game against Atlanta here on the 2nd of November. But I mean, you look at that five games in a row outside of Atlanta, not saying anybody else isn't capable of beating you, but you know, two of those games are at home and a three you play on the road, very winnable. Yeah, I think that they've got to feel, you know, pretty good. They certainly feel good with where they're at right now. And, you know, Miami's coming along. And then, of course, Atlanta within their division and you know, getting a chance to play them. At home, 
this is a, this is a good this is a good football team. I, I, you know, every year you come into the season and you kind of wonder who who are going to be the good teams because every year five or six teams that made the playoffs the year before don't make them the following year. And the Saints is one of those teams that was not in the playoffs last year. There's always a little skepticism, but you know, I think now. And even prior to this ball game, you can't deny these guys and what they've done. This this is a well coached, and it's a talented ball club. Forty eight to twenty seven. Now the Giants schedule, which up to this point in the season before this game today had been the second easiest schedule in the NFL. We mentioned the last three games, which they just rolled over Tampa Bay, Kansas City and Oakland. Those three teams that combined to win one game. Here's the onside kick. And who got it? Looks like the Saints were able to cover it up. And they do. But including today, the next 11 opponents for the Giants are a combined 33 and 15. They still have to play three of the NFL's, well, now four unbeaten teams on the road. Today with the Saints and then they go to Denver and Minnesota when all is said and done next week will host the defending NFC champion Cardinals. Well they got through the part of their schedule that you know over the previous three weeks that they knew was kind of a soft spot for them and then starting with this game the rest of the way is 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 going to be a challenge and it will be interesting to me to see how they regroup how they regroup after this loss. Which will be a tough loss. Sometimes you lose this bad, you're able to put it behind you a little bit easier than than the close ones, you know. But uh, this, this, hey, this is a veteran team. It's a veteran head coach. Staff's been together a long time. They've been in big games. They've won big games. I, this is one of those games you look at and you say, hey, you know what? We weren't very good, and and we've got to get better, and we will get better. And I don't question, I, I don't question how good this New York team is. Today's game produced by Richie Science, directed by Rich Russo, our technical producer Joe Stevens. Technical director is Colby Bourgeois. Our audio mixer, Fred Aldis. I think I made his life very tough today. The associate directors, Greg Scopatoni and Derek Manning, our broadcast associates, Rich Gross and Bentley Elliott. Senior producer of Fox Sports is Bill Brown. And the executive producers at Fox Sports are Ed Gorn and David Hill. Tom Barbary on stats, Scott Snyder, our spotter up in the booth. And Troy's been fun being with you here week one, trying to keep the seat warm for Joe Buck while he's off doing the American League Championship Series and then the World Series. Well, I've enjoyed it. And uh, we've got a couple more weeks. Look forward to that. Very and, much. And Joe got him a good game to call last night. 50, 50, up, up, up. He got a lot of good games left in that baseball postseason. And of course, you can see the remainder of the ALCS and the World Series right here on Fox. That'll take us down to the two minute warning. The New Orleans Saints are going to go to 5 0. And you said it a moment ago after going 0 3 under Sean Payton in bye weeks leading up to this year. That schedule, they finally got it right. Not going to say the biggest win in the career of Sean Payton, not when you've won a division championship and taken your team to an NFC championship game in his first year as head coach in 2006. But this certainly would be put on the resume for among the biggest wins. Mark Brunel chased and dropped for a loss by Chase Blackburn. So the Saints will punt it away. I agree with you as far as you know this win and, and even with Sean Payton coming in and, and taking him to the NFC Championship game his first year and you know a lot was expected certainly then after that season and this has been a pretty average ball club for the last two years not making it to the playoffs and this is an important year for Sean Payton and this organization to get back on track and show and I know that that Sean has wanted to try to create an atmosphere around here and create an expectation level to where 
they are one of those elite teams. They are one of those teams like the New York Giants, like the Philadelphia Eagles, like the New England Patriots. That it's expected that they're going to be going to the playoffs each and every year. And this is a team, again, looking at them, not only that can make it to the playoffs, but this is a team that has been built to really do something special once they get there. Well, they already had Breeze here. They brought in Sharper. Along with Jabari Greer and you talked about the defensive coordinator Greg Williams and certainly he had a great game plan drawn up against Eli Manning and the Saints for this game. <laughs> Out of bounds at the 19 yard line. Unbeaten teams remaining in the National Football League. Minnesota a thriller today. Got a field goal with under two minutes to beat Baltimore. Brett Favre and the Vikings now 6-0. Denver at 5-0 will play tomorrow in San Diego. Big divisional game there. Indianapolis off this week. The Saints will go to 5-0 in a minute and five seconds. A chance to see the Dallas Cowboys at home next week against the Atlanta Falcons. We brought up Atlanta with a big game later tonight at home against the Chicago Bears. Bears coming off a bye week. And Dallas a bye week this week to get ready for Atlanta. Down the middle of the field, catch made out to the 45 yard line, 30 seconds left. Well, you start to look at some of these games that are being played and and, and you just find out a lot about him. I mean, you mentioned Denver tomorrow night against San Diego. Who would have thought that at this point in the season we'd be talking about San Diego? And I don't say must win, but I mean that is a huge game for the Chargers, who were supposed to just run away with the AFC West. Mystery there between Hickson and Carr. And now a late flag comes in. There's some pushing, shoving, and some jawing going on. O'Hara was right in the middle of it. Along with number 97, Jeff Charleston, right at the end of the play. He comes down low, and I'm not sure when exactly the flag came in. If it came After in on O'Hara. was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, offense number 60. 15 yard penalty, it's second down. Well, that's just Sean O'Hara and trying to protect his quarterback. He didn't see exactly what happened. Charleston comes in late. He was blocked to the ground. O'Hara thinks that he's taking a cheap shot there on David Carr and and took exception to it. And then I tell you, as a quarterback, you want to see that. You know, this game, 15 yards doesn't mean anything. But I tell you what, it, it means a whole lot to that guy, David Carr. Impressive win for Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints. 5 0 for the first time since 1993, and they knocked the Giants out of the unbeatens in the National Football League. Still more to come from the Superdome in a moment. Forty-eight twenty-seven Saints roll over the Giants. And here's our Domino's delivers leaderboard. They could pick practically anybody wearing a Saints uniform today, starting with Drew Brees. Four touchdown passes, seven different Saints players scored a touchdown in this game. And the pride of Hofstra, Marcus Colston, they catches 166 yards 
and a touchdown. Pam Oliver is standing by with Drew Brees and we'll hear from the victorious quarterback when we return you're watching the NFL on Fox. Welcome back to the AT&T postgame show alongside Troy Aikman and Pam Oliver Tom Brenneman in New Orleans. An unbelievable effort today by Drew Brees and the Saints and Drew is standing by on the field with Pam Oliver Pam. OK thanks a lot Drew Brees boy oh boy did that feel like it looked where you could just do anything you wanted to. It felt good you know made a big emphasis coming off the bye week about coming out and playing well we hadn't done that our previous three years here so it was a big emphasis on that obviously the game couldn't be any bigger too with the undefeated Giants coming to town and uh, what can I say our, our guys played great uh, offensively defensively uh, it all started up front offensive line incredible job and we just made the plays what helped you to create so many opportunities against you know what was a very good defense. I don't know how they're feeling on the plane right back. Yeah I think every time we go into a game we're expecting to score on every possession and um, you know it's really all about tempo the tempo we create and the opportunities that we create for everybody and just kind of getting in that rhythm and we definitely got in a rhythm today. Who do you um, I don't know who do you take to dinner. You got seven different players um, who scored touchdowns today. That's crazy. Yeah that's awesome. That's that's what we like to do though. We like to spread it around get everybody involved and. Um, it's one of those things where each game you never know whose day it's going to be and today it was everybody's game. Congratulations. Thank you. Pam thank you. Well the Saints have been the highest scoring team points per game wise on average three and a half years now but Troy I guess the question maybe many in New York are asking and many here in New Orleans are asking. Are the Saints as good or are the Giants perhaps not as good as we thought. Well the first part of that is yes uh, the Saints are, are that good and, and I think the Giants are a lot better than what they showed today. I mean we know that the Giants are going to be a good team. Uh, they just ran into one of those days in a hot hand in uh, in Drew Brees and you know <laughs> he said it best with Pam Oliver that hey we, we expect to score every time we get the ball and, and there for a while that's what it looked was going to happen here today and you know they're playing awfully awfully well. So the Saints. Go to five and zero. Oh. First time since 1993. The Giants are handed their first loss of the year. We're not through yet from the Superdome. They'll be celebrating on Bourbon Street tonight. Celebration is on for Drew Brees and the Saints, winning 48 to 27. That's a story on the pro game, the college game. First time all year. The BCS standings released. Florida Gators number one Alabama two Texas after beating Oklahoma three and then two real surprise Boise State and Cincinnati rounding out the top five. I'd like to remind you stay with us on Fox later tonight. Brothers beginning at 7 Eastern 730. The Simpsons back to back. The Cleveland show at 830 at 9 o'clock Family Guy and American Dad at 930. Don't forget tomorrow afternoon it'll be game three of the American League Championship Series. The Yankees in front of the Angels two games to none. That's four Eastern one o'clock Pacific promotional consideration paid for by the following. When this day started who would remain unbeaten. The answer the Saints for Troy Aikman Pam Oliver and our entire crew I'm Tom Brenneman thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next weekend from Dallas have a great day.